Welcome everyone to Defender for Cloud in the field. We actually had a little break uh, because of all, everything that is happening around the world, as you all may know, uh, it affected uh, our episodes. But we are we are back. We are back because Ignite is uh, just happened, and this episode is gonna be out right after Ignite. Uh, and this is a follow-up conversation about some of the things that we announced at, at Microsoft Ignite 2023. And this episode is dedicated to talk about the data security dashboard and no one better than uh, this person that I'm going to talk with today, which is the first time in the show, responsible for this uh, amazing improvement in Defender for Cloud. So without further ado, Welcome, Mayan Neman Rand. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely, Mayan. Uh, before we start uh, talking about this amazing improvement in the Fender for Cloud, can you give us an overview about what you do for Microsoft? Yeah, so I'm a product manager in Microsoft Defender for Cloud in the data team. I'm leading the Defender CSPM. Uh, for Azure, AWS, and GCP, specifically sensitivity discovery, as well as the new initiatives that we'll see today, the data security dashboard. Excellent. Um, this was a big announcement at Ignite, uh, but I wanted to recap, and let's just start with uh, you telling uh, uh, what is the purpose of this new data security dashboard. So the new security dashboard that was released in Ignite SGA enables customers to quickly understand their sprawled cloud data across Azure, AWS, and GCP. So basically, it provides a centric view on the cloud security status of the customer from the perspective of sensitive data discovery for storages, PASDBs, hosted DBs, as well as a comprehensive view that highlights the direct and indirect risks to the customer's data. Awesome. Uh, and, and how does this dashboard help customers understand and manage uh, their cloud data across uh, cloud providers uh, like Azure, AWS, and GCP? So the, this new innovative uh, data security dashboard, it leverages insights from two places. One is the Defender CSPM contextual security map, and the other one is the advanced threat protection of Defender for Cloud CWP plan. And it offers three main things. The first is the discovery of the organization's data estate, as well as highlighting the resources that require immediate uh, attention from the customer. The second one is identification of potential and active risks to the data. And the last one is a comprehensive overview of the types of sensitive data that were detected inside the resources of the customer across all the clouds. So the dashboard not only provides the, or sorry, displays the potential risks, but it also helps customers address the risk. If it's by attack path and the related recommendations, or if it's by providing to the alerts that we trigger steps on how to remediate. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, 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 and how does this dashboard address the data security for both structure and unstructured data in the cloud and in uh, which resource types are discovered? So this is an interesting question. The dashboard presents the overall resources across the three clouds. So for example, if we are speaking about storage, in Azure it will be storage accounts. In AWS it will be S3 bucket, GCP storage buckets. Uh, move, moving forward to managed databases referred as PaaS DBs, so we support Azure SQL DB, AWS uh, RDS, and all our DBMS flavors in general. And also we have the hosted DBs, uh, DBs running on VMs, which are usually refer referred as uh, shadow DBs. So these are um, kind of all the resources that are currently supported in the dashboard. Well, that's a, that's a very rich uh, set of data source for sure. But can you describe uh, a real uh, word example or you know uh, 
story where the dashboard has made a, a significant impact on an organization when it comes to data secure posture? Yeah, so I had an interesting um, case just a few weeks ago. I had a customer with around 20K data resources, and he also had hundreds of active alerts. And, you know, we had a meeting, he explored the, the dashboard for the first time, and uh, we highlighted out of these so many resources and alerts, we highlighted two specific resources, which were DBs. And um, we have seen that those two DBs had alerts of SQL injection on SQL Server with sensitive data. So while the customer explored for the first time the dashboard, he revealed an active attack on his DBs. So uh, for sure he was very surprised and he took the remediation steps in order to address it, but this was very interesting. Yeah, I mean, people um, don't realize the power of data visualization. And when you combine all those things together into a single dashboard, you really uh, enable customers to go read above and beyond and, and expedite things that they didn't even know it was happening on their environment. So that's uh, amazing. But when we are talking about the dashboard, one question that may come up after uh, listening to uh, this episode so far is about uh, some of the uh, requirements. Uh, what are the required permissions to use this dashboard? Do I need to have a uh, uh, purview license? Uh, you know, some of those things. And even the costs, there is any cost associated with it. Can you clarify those questions? So this is a really a common question um, among our customers. So let's start with the requirement to view the dashboard. So a customer needs to enable Defender of CSPM on the subscriptions in order to view the dashboard. But in, under the Defender of CSPM plan, there is an extension of sensitive data discovery. This should be enabled as well, although it's enabled by default. So just to make sure. And in order to, um, to see also the active risks and the alert, customer needs to have additional workload protection plan, which is Defender for SQL or Defender for Storage. But in general, the feature is automatically activated for all Defender CSPM customers. So whenever a customer enables the Defender CSPM plan, we initiate behind the scenes a smart sampling scan uh, on all the resources that we just mentioned and we identify sensitive resources. Subsequently, of course, it displayed, we display all the information in the security dashboard. Regarding uh, permissions, which is one of the requirements, so the minimum required privilege RBAC role is security reader, and it's the same permission needed for uh, Data Security Explorer, nothing new. Okay. So, um, and regarding purview, we asked about purview. So data where security posture, like sensitivity scanning, relies on Microsoft purview built-in information types. They have something around 200, 300, and we rely on the same thing in order to assure that we have a uniform classification across services and workloads. But it's important to note that customers do not need to have purview compliance portal licensing as a mandatory requirement for the dashboard. So Anyway, we'll have a subset of the building information types in purview and we'll scan it as a default, even without licensing. But there are customers who would like to leverage like additional features, like custom information types. Customers uh, created their own information types in purview portal, or they want to use sensitivity labels. For these two capabilities, they will need the E5 licensing. But other than that, if they don't have it, they will still be able to understand in the dashboard which types of sensitive data they have. And regarding the costs, your last question. So the security dashboard, as I mentioned, it's a part of Defender CSPM, so it does not require any additional payment. If the customer enabled the plan, it's already there. Just in order to see the active alerts, then customer needs to enable Defender for DB or Defender for Storage, whichever related to their resources. All right, so this is a, a, it really clarifies uh, the, the questions about uh, the requirements. So in, in summary, in Defender CSPM is the way to go, and there is no onboarding. You don't have to do anything from the, the dashboard perspective as well. Once you have Defender CSPM, things start to populate. That's great. Now, 
We, we've gone through uh, uh, some of the main questions, but I would like to see this dash dashboard in action. So let's jump to the demo now. Great, thank you. So uh, as you can see, to access data security dashboard, you just go to cloud security and choose this blade. And the dashboard is consistent of three different sections. The first one is the overview section. Then we have the top issues. And the last one is the closer look. So let's start with the overview section. We can observe that the dashboard covers a combination of storage accounts, managed database, and hosted database, as we can see here, on the three clouds in the scope. So uh, for example, if we would like to see our hosted DBs, I will click on the resource um, type title, and I'll be redirected to the Security Explorer. Clicking Search will show me the list of hosted DBs that I have in my subscriptions, in my environment. Now, um, going to the next section in the coverage status, we can figure out that we have around 100 resources which are fully protected. We call it covered. It means that they have enabled Defender CSPM and another workload protection, like Defender for Storage or Defender for SQL. But we still see that there are around 140 resources which are partially covered. They are missing the additional value. So while hovering on the eye icon, I can see that they are lacking the Defender for Storage uh, plan, and they won't be able to see alerts for these resources. In the right side, we can see the sensitive resources. So out of 256 resources that were discovered, we detected with our smart sampling scan 30 sensitive resources. Out of them, 25 are storage assets and 5 are managed DBs. So the customer sees 30 sensitive resources. Now he wants to understand if all these resources hide a risk inside, what does he need to take care of first? So that's why we added the sensitive resources that require attention. The definition for such a resource is a resource that has high severity alerts or attack path. So out of 30, 22 require my immediate attention. So in order to understand uh, what's these two, 22 resources, um, why are these 22 resources risky, we'll go to the next section, which is uh, top issues. And we will be able to see here a summarize of the active alerts coming from Defender for SQL and Defender for Storage. We highlight the types of sensitive resources which are under immediate risk due to recent security alerts. So clicking on the link below will show me all the relevant alerts on these two resources. We can see that there is a Ninja SQL server here, which has an active brute force attempt alert on it. Clicking on the alert will show us in the take action how we can remediate this risk. So now we'll go to the uh, right tile of sensitive resources with attack paths. So all of us know that attack path is a chain of misconfiguration that can help uh, attackers gain access to your data or compute. So what we need to do in order to remediate it is break this misconfiguration chain uh, with the recommendations. So let's see the relevant attack path by clicking the link. We will be redirected to the new blade of attack paths. And let's drill down into two attack paths. Let's take one which is related to SQL Server. OK. So what we have here is which is internet exposed, exposed to all the internet, and allows basic authentication using user and password, and also contains sensitive data according to our smart scan that we just discussed. So in order to remediate it, we're going to click on the SQL Server node, go to Recommendation, and we can see that the possible recommendation can be used AAD authentication or block public access uh, from the internet um, on the DB itself. And if you would like also to see which information types, which types of sensitive data will be detect detected, I'm clicking on the SQL database and the insights, and I can expand the results and see that on this database, I detected IBAN. It's a financial uh, sensitive data. I can see the exact uh, column name. 
And also, um, I see that this database was labeled with all employees sensitivity label. Let's go back and we'll explore another attack path. This time it will be a lateral movement one. Let's choose this. This attack path is a lateral movement attack path. An attacker gain access to the internet exposed VM and leverage remote execution weakness on the VM that enables him to impersonate the VM identity and use the storage permission to gain access to the precious sensitive data that we have in the storage. So here we see the exposure to the internet of the VM. Here is the VM. By the way, there are active alerts. We can see it uh, that may indicate a possible brute force uh, attack on this VM. And we see the identity and the storage in the end that can be accessed by this identity. Again, we can see in the contain sensitive data the results of the scan. In this case, we see financial information, we see PII information, ISSN, Nino, and so on, as well as credentials. We see machine keys, secrets keys, and so on. Let's go back to the dashboard. So after we understood the resources that require attention, we are going to go to the data queries in the Security Explorer. So here we show the data security related issues that you will, may want to look into. We'll take two, two examples. The first one is publicly available storage that contains sensitive data. I want to see which resources are these 14 resources. I'm clicking on view. I'll be redirected to the Cloud Explorer. Um, for example, you see here all storage accounts that contain sensitive data and also has an insight of allow public access. And I get a list of resources. Let's go back. Another interesting um, query here is the data resources accessible with plain text secrets. We are scanning VMs to look for plain text secrets inside that these plain text secrets can help attackers reach another VM, another uh, DB or storage. So let's take the first example. We detected Azure database connection string and it can lead to this DB. Now I want to know where was it detected on which VM. So I will add another insight of contained in virtual machines and now I can figure out that this plain text secret was detected on Contoso DSVM VM. So these were just two examples of important queries that can help customers uh, focus on risk. Now, after we finish the top issues layer, we'll go to the closer look. So what we have is in closer look is an understanding of which sensitive which types of sensitive data the customer has in his environment. So in this section, for example, we can see that 18 out of 30 sensitive resources contains credit card. Clicking on this will redirect me to the list of resources with credit card. Now, for example, I would like to edit it. I would like also to see the ones with debit card. So I will add another information types and we'll get all the resources with that, which has both debit card and credit card. Same for sensitivity labels. I can see how many resources has a specific label. All employees, seven out of 30. And another interesting thing in this tile, we are redirecting you to the data sensitivity setting. So this blade basically helps an organization to define what is considered sensitive for this specific organization. I mentioned at the beginning that we are scanning according to a specific set of information types like default. So we have default of finance information types and PIIs and credentials. But if customer would like to add additional ones that are not part of the default, he just goes to the other and select whatever he wants and add it. Same for custom. These are my custom information types that I created in Purview Compliance Portal. Customer can import them and uh, decide if he wants to scan them. The second part is set sensitivity label threshold. So for E5 customer, we are importing the sensitivity label and the customer can set a threshold. So for example, 
I decided that confidential will be my threshold. This means that labels confidential and all the rest of the labels which has higher sensitivity will be considered sensitive. This screen can be accessed only by tenant level admin, the same as sensitivity labels in Purview Compliance Portal that are ruled and configured by tenant level. So after we configured everything, we would like um, to understand where it will reflect. So things sensitive uh, info types that are considered sensitive and labels uh, will reflect in the cloud security explorer, like in attack path and in security um, data security explorer. So only resources that contains one of them will be considered sensitive there. So after we uh, understood what types of sensitive data we have, uh, we will do like a zoom out to exposure. Now we can see in the right side, the internet exposed data resources. So we can see the trends. So if the exposed resources are um, extending or descending, as well as a distribution of storage accounts, managed databases and hosted TVs. That was a great demo, uh, Mayan. It really shows the power of the dashboard and not only the power of the dashboard itself, but how you can pivot from the dashboard to the attack path to the Cloud Secure Explorer. Great, great demo. Thank you very much for that. Do you have any final thoughts and considerations that you want to share? Yeah, so during public preview, we have seen that this, uh, that customer loves this feature very much because as I mentioned, it gives them a centric view. They don't need to go through recommendation laid and um, attack path and alerts and so on. They have a centric place where they can get all their data state, all the sensitive resources that were detected, all the risks and how to remediate the risks. So it's a very powerful feature and we encourage you to try it. It's in GA. And of course, any feedback uh, is welcome. You can just click on guidance feedback and uh, share your thoughts. Thank you very much, Maya. I appreciate the, the work that you've done on this feature and the whole team. Thank you very much for taking the time to share with us today. And thank you all for the audience. Make sure to subscribe to our Microsoft uh, security channel. There you can find the playlist for the Fenafor Cloud in the field, which is the AKA link below. Make sure to go there, hit the bell to get notifications when new episodes are uploaded. And stay tuned, we have a lot of follow-up episodes uh, from Ignite. See you next time.